Today I wanted to show you how to create a user um, using Proloquo. So once you open up Proloquo, um, you'll be prompted to enter a username. So I'm just going to use this one as test123. You can select languages. We have many languages here. I just stick with English United States. And here are some different voice options with also downloadable um, voices if you want to vary them. Um, I'm going to pick Josh. Hello, my name is Josh. Um, I, generally, I just pick the crescent, crescendo uh, vocabulary. Um, they do have gateway to language and learning, which um, is core vocabulary that's set up um, for learning and communication. Um, and it's all pre-made, um, the crescendo one will be just fine. If you do empty, then it's going to leave nothing. Um, so I do like to use the crescendo one. Um, they suggest using an intermediate core vocabulary, and I do like that one because you can build on it. Um, if you choose basic communication, um, it, it uh, you can't really level or um, move up. When you do intermediate, you can. Um, orientation is very important. When you um, make your boards, if you flip it the other direction, your board, your icons will shift and move. So just make sure that you're consistent in which orientation um, that you prefer, whether it's horizontal or vertical. I generally like to do um, horizontal, but it's up to you and your preference. This is where we get to select how many cells are in a grid, um, and you can just use the, the minus arrow or the minus button to go down. I usually start with just the very basic. Um, so here is a 15 button um, cells or 15 button grid, and I'll use that one. Um, and then that's all that I do. And so when you press finish, this will come up. Um, and then here is just the basic. So once here, this is where I do like to do a lot more customizing. Um, so if you go down to the little um, gears um, down on the bottom, you'll go over to restrictions. Um, and this is where all the, the um, buttons at the bottom are located and you can take them off because if you have too many on um, it's gonna be kind of confusing I generally like to um, oops just keep it basic and add as I need to go along so I'm gonna take off all of these buttons on the bottom um, except we'll keep with the restore from backup uh, and I like to keep the home button, but I'll take off the keyboard. Um, I'm going to say this is for a young child who really isn't typing yet. And we're going to keep edit mode on for right now because I do have some other features that I want to go over with you. Um, so that's where you would customize that. Within the other things, you have different settings too, um, as far as appearance. So I do like to make... Um, my uh, window size a little bit smaller um, because then it makes my cells a little bit bigger. You can also change your toolbar um, to be a little bit wider too. So just depending on your fingers and your students' fingers, you know, are they able to um, access or touch these different features on, on the bars. Um, one of the other things as well is um, color coding. So color coding is good, um, especially if you're consistent and you stick with it because then you can tell your student to press an orange one or, you know, if you're working on pronouns, um, you know that those are always going to be orange and pink are going to be verbs um, and blue or like um, uh, modif like uh, adjectives, descriptors. Um, I do also within view I like to change my background color because then your buttons um, kind of stick out a little better um, and I can change my button spacing 
to be compact or medium. So I generally like compact because then you can see um, the separation of each button. Um, and then alignment, of course you can, uh, that's just the way the buttons will align. align. Um, but there's no change on this particular setup. Uh, so here's where we have all of our sides. I want go. I want to go outside. I want to go outside. So when you're working with your students too and you're having them practice, it doesn't need to be a grammatically correct sentence. It's just those concepts um, that we need to get across. One of the other things that I wanted to do to show you too, and this is a great feature that they have on here, is um, the language support. So if you hold the button, these other options go up and you can either put, um, you know, past tense or they go or we'll go. go. We'll go. Um, so it's just different verb conjugations um, or different, um, so I could be me or mine or myself. Um, so you can pick those. I find it to be a little confusing and my students aren't quite ready for that. Really, it just depends on, on um, you and your students' needs. So I go up to, um, let's see, oh, it's grammar. So get out of appearance, speech and language, nope. Grammar support. So I can just turn it off. And now when I hold the button, that Want. doesn't come up. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you too, so once you take this off, um, turn off your edit button and click out of Proloquo and go to your settings. And then scroll down to Proloquo. And then you can turn your buttons off, your options button. Then when you open Proloquo, you don't have any of these down here. So your student can't get around or move around and try to alter any buttons. Um, and you can also put it in guided access so they can't get out. Anyway, this was just a quick tutorial or just a little video review on how to set up a new user using Proloquo. Thanks.